So the last topic today we are going to discuss will be the sources and nature of geospatial data. Learning objective. Here we are going to deal with the spatial and the non-spatial data. In the last class we discussed about the spatial data. Now here we are going to again discuss about the spatial and the non-spatial data structure. Uh, to get an idea about digital elevation model, SRTM, leader and other data set. These are the elevation data set. Okay, global, uh, global elevation database. Now to understand the data input and output process and devices. Uh, data verification, correction, storage and conversion, data conversion in GIS environment. Now first, data types. The spatial data and the non-spatial data. Very simple. The spatial data will be the features in GIS environment. For say point, line, polygons with a XY information. This is a spatial data. Now, any information regarding that feature Okay, any information that means the attribute information which is attached to that particular feature will be your non-spatial data. For instance, we know that this is a point. Okay, spatial data because it has a XY coordinate. It, is, it will be defined on the basis of XY coordinate. Now, if a name is attached to this particular point, suppose the name Guwahati city, then this is going to be your attribute data, non-spatial data. Okay, so basically two types, spatial data and non-spatial data. Spatial data will give you that, uh, the information about XY. So it will be a feature in GIS environment, point line, polygon, and any name, any attribute attached to that particular feature will be your non-spatial data. Now, digital elevation model. Digital elevation model is a digital representation of the arts topography. Okay, basically here, we are going to depict the elevation information for geographic locations. So here location will be there. Okay, X, Y coordinates will be there and the elevation information will be there. Z value will be there. And from these informations, we can generate a digital elevation model. So for any digital elevation model, you must understand that you need to know the location information and the elevation information. If you have these two sets of information, then you will be able to get this digital elevation model. Now, there are two concepts actually, which is attached to the elevation model. One is your digital elevation model under that. One is your terrain model and one is your surface model. Okay. One is DTM and DSM. Okay. Now, this terrain model basically represents the bare art surface. Terrain. It will see that means the ground okay earth surface this will be your terrain now the surface model which actually will represent the surface that means if there is a that, that means if there is a building building height will be considered there is a tree tree height will be con considered okay so in a city that there will be a drastic difference your between your terrain model and the surface model okay so the contours are basically terrain information. Isolines connecting the points with equal elevation, same elevation. Okay. So contours are it gives us the idea about the terrain, not about the surface. Okay. But if you are flying an aeroplane and collecting the altitudinal information, that means from a satellite, if you are collecting the information, you are not going to get the terrain model. Because the height of this building will also be considered surface model. So please see the difference. Now, methods to obtain the DEM. Obviously, uh, you know, in uh, using remote sensing, lidar data, light detection and ranging, aerial photogrammetry, okay? flying and aircraft. Also, we can get the elevation. But in that case, where it will be terrain model or surface model? <coughs> surface model. Okay. Now, drone imagery can also be used. Uh, topographical maps. Survey of India topographical maps where we can have this, uh, you know, uh, contour information, benchmark, triangulation height, spot height, all from using all them, all of them we can create this uh, elevation model. GPS, real time kinematic GPS means, suppose you are carrying a GPS with external antenna and you are moving, okay, kinematic. Then for every point it will collect the altitudes, okay, and you will be able to capture it. But the point is, you are using a GPS, your elevation will be ellipsoidal or geoidal? Ellipsoidal. 
ellipsoidal okay ellipsoidal in that case theodolite or total station survey geodetic survey at the specific location you are going to collect the altitude information ellipsoidal or geoidal geoidal local okay yes no dm data sources n number of data sources like one of most widely used data source is your SRTM, Subtle Radar Topographic Mission. Global DEM data you can get. Z Topo, Globe, Esther, okay, JSAX Global also 3D World. These are the platforms, these are the particular data from where you can get uh, DEM data with a different resolution. Okay, few of them are 30 meter resolutions. Okay, and more than that. So these are the you know DEM data sources. Please go through it. Now input and output devices in GIS. This is very important. You see, the GIS depends on the data. We know the GIS is a decision support system. Now, how efficiently it is going to support your decision is based on how perfect or precise data okay, you have provided. What precise data you have provided? If your data is garbage, you will get garbage. Hmm? Now, how to input data in GIS environment? Okay. So you see, there are like input devices like satellite images are a good source of data to the GIS. Okay. Uh, any maps which is digitized in a GIS environment can provide the data to GIS analysis. Keyboards manual data entering okay uh, pointing devices mouse touchpad joystick joystick is required for a 3d modeling okay scanner you are scanning a specific base map and you are going to convert it into a scanning the base map will give you a raster data then you can convert the raster into vector and all please remember all analysis in case of gis regarding the geographic features point line polygon can be performed on vector data only Okay. For continuous analysis, you need a raster data. For discrete analysis, you need a vector data. If you want to know the land use land cover changes, you, then your analysis will be based on raster. If you want to know the distance, okay, the proximity, connectivity, vector. Because this is going to be a discrete analysis. Okay. Outputs. Oh, it is as per your wish. You can generate graphs, tables, output maps, thematic maps any types of maps you can generate okay and this you can get a copy of it using the printer plotter okay so this is going to be output devices in case of the GIS all these map printing devices okay now GIS data conversion two concepts only we have to understand one is your rasterization one is your vectorization now this rasterization is all about converting the vector data into raster data that means you have a map in GIS environment and in that map the entities are actually uh, mapped using a vector data. Suppose you have a district, suppose Assam, road map of Assam. There will be roads, districts and the administrative boundaries and important places. We know these are the discrete informations, they must stored in a vector data format. Now, now using an output device, you are getting a map, road map of Assam, a printout. This is a rasterization. You have converted the vector data into a raster data. You get a print of your digital map. Okay. Now, vectorization will require some effort because here you are going to convert the raster data into the vector data. So first, you have to use an input device to scan that particular base map you have to keep take it into the GIS environment then you have to create these features point line and polygon and the end you have to go for digitization using a mouse or joystick you have to go for entering the data you have to create both spatial data and the non spatial data for instance you have to create the point first then you have to name the point that this is a place known as a Guwahati, Jorhat or something like that or then you have to create a boundary suppose this is a national boundary international boundary in case of Assam okay and you have to digitize it you have to convert the raster you know image into a boundary that means a line image okay and ultimately the districts they will be created as a polygon 
So it will require some time and effort to convert the raster data into the vector data. So this is known as a vectorization. Okay, so rasterization as we, we have understood that is a very simple, you know, exercise. You have to simply take the, you take help of the output device, take the printout and your vector will be converted into raster. But a raster conversion to vector, vectorization, okay, involves some basic elements. The line thinning, line extraction, topological reconstruction, and there are different methods to convert this particular any any raster data into vector that means vectorization you have to see the uh, line thinning how you see uh, your road may be appeared as a very broad line in your raster image or it can be broken line also pixelated lines can also be possible okay that pixelated line you when you are converting into a polyline in GIS environment it, it will thin, you know, this is going to be line thinning, line extraction, there are some gaps, you have to extract it, okay. So all these exercises you have to perform in case of your vectorization. Now I am going to stop here, thank you, thanks for joining.